So uh, Andy, thank you for uh, allowing us to be here. Uh, I really appreciate you opening up the collection and uh, just being a real car enthusiast. Yeah. I know you've got uh, some real amazing cars here. And I'd like to talk about some of the rare cars to start with. Maybe in the United States, you might be the only one that has that particular mm -hmm. car being the one-off. Or maybe there really is just one of those cars that were ever made. There's a couple of those here. There's a Buick GNX that's the only one ever made. It's got an experimental an EX serial number on it, so you can't even register it. They put a big V8 in it and put a supercharger on top of it. Uh, between the badging and even on the inside, the speedometer and mm -hmm. everything else says GNX, so nobody can duplicate it. It'd be very hard to. So how did you get your hands on the Buick? Because I, I, if I was in there, I would want to know, how do I get my hands on a one-off? But I, I can't really tell you because a lot of times I just, I'll get a phone call. Ah. I, I see it, I, I've been doing it so long that I have friends of mine who'll see something driving down the street and they might call me and tell me, you know what, I just found this. Uh, I just wound up with a 1954 Packard Hearse and it just happened. Somebody I know was going to the funeral parlor and there was this 54 sitting on the side. And yeah. He asked the guy if it was for sale, and the guy said, yeah, I guess, and that was it. So it's got the coffin and everything. Oh, good, wonderful. So what was, what was the first car that you had that you kind of always wanted, you couldn't get your hands on, but you finally got and said, my God, this is the start of my collection, or this is the car I've always wanted? 69. Chevy uh, Corvette Roadster. Where's that car today? I sold it. Okay. About a month and a half ago. I had it for 40 years. Fantastic. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, it was just, it was time to go. And in 40 years, I put maybe 100 miles on it. No. Oh my God. That's not a lot of miles. No. No. Not quite. There's a Gillette Vertigo, mm -hmm. and it's the only one in North America. So 1996, me... it's just a uh, very quick little sports car. And So Gillette, we all know the name Gillette from the Razor Company, but I imagine that has nothing to do with this. No, it doesn't. There's a fellow called uh, Gillette. He's a famous racer ah, okay. in Europe, and this thing is a Gillette Vertigo. And from what I was told, they only made 11 of them. It comes from Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it into the country through Canada, and like I said, as far as I know, it's the only one that might be left because it is a 96. It did the La Automobile show down in Miami yep. and won it because of the fact that it was only for supercars. What made this one, what I was told, rare and why it won not because it was the fastest, the most expensive, or anything else. It's just that it's got the shortest rear end yep. of any supercar out there. It's got the longest hood, supposedly, of any of its time. And in reality, it was like a $100,000, $150,000 car versus the $2 million LaFerrari and sure. that. And that was the only reason why I was told it won was because of looking at dollar value and everything else. But it definitely is a oddball car. It, it is oddball and everything is so exaggerated. The hood is exaggerated, the width is exaggerated. Everything. It's, it's so wide. We do have two cars here that were actually born on Long Island. And the fella spent, from what I was told, five and a half million dollars. And every, there's not one part on that car that comes from another car. And that car's here? There's two of them here. Two? Yeah. In this room? In this room. Can you tell us about that car? Or these cars? They're AC iconic roadsters. Mm -hmm. They were allowed the word AC, which is originally what Cobras were called, as a car company in uh, England, mm -hmm. 
this car has the right to use the AC on it. Both of them have Ernie Elliott 800 horsepower naturally aspirated motors. Both cars are exactly the same. Okay. What you're looking at is a completed car in the bottom. It, it did come in a couple of different configurations, but then they took a completed car on the top. They removed the body. Mm -hmm. They cut off part of the sides. They cut off the floor. And the purpose of that was when it was at the car show, it did the entire circuit uh, in one year. Mm -hmm. And the purpose was to say, well, this is the completed car. This is how it's built. This is how it looks underneath. Look how strong it is. Everything else, look at the motor. You know, it's just look at this, look at that. There are no parts on this car that were taken from another car. Everything is just either titanium, uh, carbon fiber. That's the stuff uh, we like, right. the one-offs. There are very, very few wires in the car. Okay. So it is capable of 240 miles an hour. Uh, they just, they really are a great car that will never get made. There we have it guys, we got a chance to see an amazing collection, a collection that we really want to bring to you. It encompasses cars that we wouldn't normally find, such as the experimental Buick GNX truck. Never saw one before, and we're never going to see one again because that's the only one. It's not even registered. That's a car that's experimental and it's tucked in the corner of Andy's garage. The other two cars that we got a chance to see were not one but two AC Iconics with 800 horsepower Ernie Elliott engines in them. This was a massive engine shoehorned in a very light vehicle and you've got to be just nuts to drive. Maybe you're as nuts as the guy called Gillette, the Gillette Vertigo. The Gillette Vertigo was a car that I had never seen before and after we got a chance to see it, I went back home and just did a little Google and got a chance to understand what that was all about. So I mean there's just amazing things to see when people open up their collections to us. Tomorrow we're going to get a chance to see the historics, the classics in Andy's garage. So when we go to the other side, please join us and uh, put your comments down and hit like and uh, we'll just keep doing this. We'll get a chance to go to different places and it's not going to be the museums. It's going to be the collections that really only few know about that we're going to get a chance to sit with the owners and open it up to you folks. Enjoy. Enjoy.